Good morning. Welcome to St. Angela Marici Catholic Church. We are so happy you are with us today as we celebrate the 21st Sunday in Ordinary Time. To help our dismissals flow easier, we will have our Sunday collection during the usual time while the clergy prepare the altar for the Eucharist. A safety usher will walk through the open pews with the baskets to eliminate the need for parishioners to touch the baskets. Thank you so much for your generosity. Our music ministry is looking for string players to start a string choir to minister at Mass. If you play violin, viola, cello, or stand-up bass and are interested to learn more, please contact Tracy Oliver in the parish office. All age groups are welcome. A parish email is sent out at the end of each week with a song sheet for the weekend's liturgy. We also have a QR code in the narthex. If you scan this code with your camera on your smart device, it will pull up the link for the song sheet for you. In your song sheet, you will find the stewardship prayer. Let's stand and pray this prayer together. Dear Heavenly Father, my parish is composed of people like me. I help make it what it is. It will be friendly if I am. Its pews will be filled if I help fill them. It will do great work if I work. It will make generous gifts to many causes if I am a generous giver. It will bring other people into its worship and fellowship if I invite and bring them. It will be a parish of loyalty and love, of fearlessness and faith, and a parish with a noble spirit if I, who make it what it is, am filled with these same things. Therefore, with your help, O God, I shall dedicate myself to the task of being all things that I want my parish to be. Amen.
in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear friends, in today's Gospel, we hear Peter acknowledge that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. As we prepare ourselves for this liturgy, let us open our hearts to encounter the same Christ who is present among us. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, you are the Christ, Son of the living God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the revelation of the Heavenly Father. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you build your church upon the community of faithful. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Pray. 
prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to Shebna, master of the palace, I will thrust you from your office and pull you down from your station. On that day, I will summon my servant, Eliakim, son of Hilkiah. I will clothe him with your robe and gird him with your sash and give over to him your authority. He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. I will place the key of the house of David on Elkayim's shoulder. When he opens, no one shall shut. When he shuts, no one shall open. I will fix him like a peg in a sure spot to be a place of honor for his family. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. O oh, the depths of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God! How inscrutable are his judgments and how unsearchable his ways! For who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor? Or who has given the Lord anything that he may be repaid? For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord.
church and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it hallelujah 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 with you A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi and he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, well, some say John the Baptist others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And he said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, blessed are you Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven, Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear parents, brothers and sisters, and little children, today we are invited to believe in Christ as the Son of living God. To believe in Christ as the Son of, Son of God is a gift of faith which enables each one of us uh, to make very, very personal and decisive commitment to Christ and to become partners in building his kingdom. If we think Jesus was not so much concerned about his fame among the public, what he really wanted to know was whether each of his disciples fully understood who he was. Fortunately, St. Peter, on behalf of the rest, gave him very convincing and encourages, uh, encouraging and also courageous answer, Matthew chapter 16, verse 16, you are the Christ, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. My dear friends, if you don't mind, may I give you a little geographical background of this gospel passage that we heard. Last Sunday, we met Jesus in the region of Tyre and Sidon, Matthew chapter 15. And today we see Jesus in the place called Caesarea Philippi, Matthew chapter 16, 13 to 19. This would have been very long roundabout and tiresome journey of Jesus and his disciples. I'm not going to uh, be in details about their journey, but I like to say that it would have 
taken over six months on foot to cover all the regions that are mentioned in the Bible today. Why did Jesus choose this long, long journey? It is suggested that Jesus might have chosen this long route to give himself and to his disciples quality time to get to know each other. And it is the end of this journey that Jesus asked his disciples, who do you say that I am? Jesus was the, remember, Jesus was on the way to Jerusalem. And he knew, and he knew what was writing, waiting for him, and we will not discuss on that matter. Now the question is, now what would have been the forced reasons behind the question of Jesus, who do you think that I am? Imagine, it is a 2,000 years old question is uh, being repeated today for each one of us uh, for the uh, reflection, who do you, or each one of us, how we can know Jesus. Each one of us has the responsibility uh, to answer the question if Jesus asks you and me, each one of us has this answer, you are the Christ, the, the living God. And we can just go back to the uh, chapters of St. Matthew, Matthew in order to get some in some answers. Very quickly, we take some of the incidents, some of the uh, matters that is mentioned, that are mentioned in the previous chapters of Matthew. By the way, I repeat, we heard the gospel from um, the uh, Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16, 13 to 19. Now, in order to know something, that who Jesus was, uh, we have to go back to the Matthew chapter 1 or 2. Okay, some incidents I like to take it up. We know that uh, Peter confessed that Jesus is the Messiah, but we heard that Christ, Christ you are the Christ, Christ is coming from the Greek word Christos, means the anointed one. Here we say also Jesus is the Messiah, uh, the anointed one in Hebrew. So we see the Gospel of Matthew chapter 2, the visit of Magi. Did you observe what did they ask to the king Herod? Where is the newborn king of Jesus? So we know that he is the king the Prince of Peace, who came to lay down his life for the people. And Matthew chapter 2, uh, 6, it was the fulfillment of the prophecy of Isaiah. And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means last, uh, least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people of Israel. And in the time of the baptism, you can understand that the declaration or the proclamation of Heavenly Father, Matthew chapter 3, 17, B, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. My dear friends, I am sure Jesus knew that he is the son of the living God, and we can also understand from the beginning of the Gospel of Matthew, and it was very well revealed in many instances to the disciples. Uh, still, why did you, why did Jesus ask this question to Peter? Who do you say that I am? Did he lose a sense of identity? It is said jokingly, a good that Jesus was not from Texas. Otherwise, his question, who do you say that I am, would have been very shortened one. Over here, it is said, instead of how are you, or instead of how are you doing, the Texans ask, hi, howdy, or howdy, partner. And again, instead of asking, who are you? 
some will ask, hi, who are you? And Jesus would have been, if he would have been an ethics, and he would have been asked the same question, who I? Or something like that, very short. And the disciples would have really got confused all the more. It is a very simple and conversational expression. What I said, it may not be applicable for everyone, but it is only a, just a simple and conversational expressions of the common folk. Jesus knew that the people might have got confused and they did not understand really who he is and what is his mission, though in the beginning of Matthew's gospel, it is very clear, it is very obvious, and he, that he is the Messiah, he is the beloved son of God. But we can see the people demanded signs from Jesus, Matthew chapter 12, and also we can see in the beginning of Matthew, chapter 16 of Matthew, the disciples of John the Baptist really had doubted. Matthew chapter 11, verse 3, they asked Jesus, are you the one who is to come or should we look for another? We can see Jesus' reproaches to unrepentant towns, Matthew chapter 11, 20, and the following. And we, when we go back to a Mark and Gospel, we can see the messianic secret, the theme of messianic secret become, becomes most uh, 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 popular one for a reflection. Matthew chapter 1, 43 to 45, after uh, healing the leper, he's asking him, tell no one. That is the messianic secret. And we can see the other gospel, John and um, Luke, we can see the devils and demons really knew who Jesus was, but the people are finding difficulty to know who is Jesus. That is the messianic secret. And Jesus told many, of, many times to many people, do not tell anyone about his uh, uh, status as the Messiah. And even today in the gospel, we can see the last part of it. Jesus is silencing uh, Peter. Do not tell anyone. Now, who did? Why did he prohibit everyone from revealing him as Messiah, the son of the living God? Because he has still to teach so many things until he fulfills the will of God on the cross. As I said in the introduction, once they understood who is Jesus, they were given big responsibility to collaborate and to build the kingdom of the Lord on the earth. After Peter confessed that Jesus is the Messiah or Jesus is the Christ, son of the living God, did you observe what Jesus said to him? Matthew chapter 16, 17 to 19, blessed are you, Simon, son of, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. She means we need the grace of God to know Jesus, to know Jesus. And you are Peter upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of the nether world shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And we should be having this grace of the Lord to understand the presence of God, the holy scripture, etc. My dear friends, as I conclude, we have this duty. First of all, we have to come to know Jesus. And we have to experience him, then he will give us the responsibility to become the partners to build the kingdom of God. May I repeat what I said uh, before? As St. Peter and the other disciples have this commitment to establish the kingdom of God, so also at present the Pope is the successor of our St. Peter and the cardinals, bishops, and clergy, and the deacons, the lay leaders, and each 
Christian should be committed to establish God's kingdom on the earth. To know Jesus is our goal today. 2,000 year old question is being repeated today, as I said before, how we can know Jesus. To know Jesus and experience him within us, in this very rush and noise of life, we must find in revels to kneel before God in prayer with all our frailty and humility. And my dear friends, this time of, of pandemic, we need this interval to kneel down before the Lord and ask his grace. We need the gifts of the Holy Spirit to protect and guide, love and forgive and accept one another in the family and in the society. May God bless all of you and have a very wonderful uh, Sunday with your family members. Amen. Let us all stand for the profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory, judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our Lord, God's kindness endures forever. Let us bring before God the needs of all. For wisdom and courage for Pope Francis as he leads our church, following in the footsteps of St. Peter, we pray to the Lord. That our elected leaders may be guided by empathy for the people they serve and consider the effects of the decisions they make on the least of them. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For students, teachers, and administrators at the beginning of a new school year, that they return to the classroom eager to discover new things. We pray to the Lord. For all who come to our doors inquiring about life in Christ, that they may find him in us and, how, and in how we welcome and serve them. We pray to the Lord. For all those suffering from chronic illnesses and for their caregivers and loved ones, that they may be given courage and hope to endure the crosses they bear, we pray to the Lord. For all those who are ill, and for all those who have died, including Zoila 
A. Martinez. We pray to the Lord for all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. O God, you see the lowly and know the proud from afar. Hear the prayers that we bring to you today and graciously grant them according to your will through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my dear friends, that our prayers and sacrifices may be accepted to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right. Yeah. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so in company with the cause of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather the people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Until Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Saint Angela Marici, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, Daniel our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on this world all that is good.
through him and with him and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other now a sign of the peace of Christ. Peace to your Father. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you shall enter my roof. But you say the word, my soul shall be. We have entered the communion rite of the Mass. We ask that you not leave after communion. Please wait until you are dismissed after Mass by the ushers. For communion, we ask that you stay in your places and Father will come to you. Once Father has placed the Eucharist in your hand, please wait until he has moved at least six feet from you before removing your mask to consume the Eucharist. Once you have consumed the Blessed Sacrament, then you may kneel for the remainder of the rite. Receiving communion on the tongue is not permitted at this time. Please stand.
Pray. Complete within us, Lord, we pray the healing work of your mercy and graciously perfect and sustain us so that in all things we may please you through Christ our Lord. Please be seated for a moment. We know that many of you are celebrating life events during this time and are not able, not able to celebrate them in the way that you might have envisioned. So, if you are celebrating a birthday this week, would you please stand up? We'd like to recognize you. Happy birthday. 
Right. <clears throat> and how about those of you who might be celebrating your wedding anniversary this week? Would you please stand so we could recognize you? Woo! All right. <laughs> Happy anniversary. We pray that you'll all have good health and that your days are filled with peace, love, and the joy of the Lord. A representative from the Safe and Secure Committee would like to uh, would like a moment to speak to you. Okay. Good morning, everybody. My name is Omar Mata, and I'm the facilities coordinator here. Been here about almost two years. I'm also the staff lead on the Safe and Secure Committee. Um, you know, I'm really happy to see all of you here. I would like to give a start off with a special thanks to all the volunteers, you know, your ushers, the safety team, um, your clergy, you know, our liturgy. Um, I have a question. How many of you would like to see our church continue to grow? You know, be a force for good. I know I do. Amen. So I'm here to ask your help for something that's very important to all of us. The public ministry of the church. Our masses, weddings, funerals, faith formation, events. Oh, like trunk or treat. I mean, I know that's a, that's a yearly favorite, right? <clears throat> like today. I mean, I'm sure you've all enjoyed being in communion with God. I know I have. Today's been a special mass. But have you given any thought to what it takes to make these things happen? This pandemic has added a whole new and difficult dimension, a dimension that requires more boots on the ground. You know, people like you and me, people that are ready to take action and stand up for our parish, for our parishioners, for our clergy. We need volunteers. We need volunteers. We need help. We need a lot of help. We need manpower, woman power, youth power. We need volunteers who will make sure that our parishioners are safe Procedures are safely executed. Disinf excuse me, disinfection and cleanup procedures are followed, allowing our ministry leaders to focus on their particular duties. For example, weddings. We have a wedding ministry. It's a small, small group. We don't need them to be working the door, greeting and ushering people in because there are procedures to come in here, as you already know. They need to focus on their wedding duties. Funerals, the same thing. And hopefully soon, events. Look, guys, we need you. We really do. You don't need experience. We'll train. And I'll probably be involved in all of those, too. So <laughs> we'll train. And we just, you know, we just need you to have a loving heart. You know, the Christian desire to help each other out. So let me leave you with this. This quote from St. Francis of Sissy. Preach the gospel at all times. If necessary, use words. If you want more information and are ready to volunteer, I'll be in the front outside of the church after mass. And I, we can chat about it, give you some information, or your email, phone number, and I'll, I'll greatly jot it down and send you something by email. If you're not ready at the moment, feel free to call our church at any time. Thank you. My dear friends, let us also thank our safe and security team for their committed service for the protection of each one of us. Let us give them a round of applause. The Lord be with you. 
May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. The baskets for the second collection are by each exit door. Our second collection today is for our St. Vincent de Paul Society. Thank you so much for your generosity. Peace. 